Okay, we're in Perik Hay of the uh, Perik Sikum, the summary uh, chapter, which is really introducing new ideas. And, um, and here we're going to talk about the importance of concentration on prayer. So page 312 in the English and Kuf Samachai in the Hebrew. Kvar Hevenu Kama Pa'amim. We've already brought down a number of times. The words of the Rambam in Marduvuchem, the Rambam in the Marduvuchem, um, Chela Gimel, Perik Nun Aleph, the third <laughs> section, in the 51st chapter. Um, Marduvuchem is, is philosophical work, and the third chapter is probably the most challenging and the most esoteric. But anyway, in there, in the third chapter, uh, he writes Kosev, Shivizman Sha'adam Choshev Al Shemisparach Nimsa, who as Ito Yisparach Bepoel. That when God, when a man thinks about God, that's where God is. So this is an amazing concept, right? We've been talking about this idea a little bit, but you can create reality with your thoughts, right? That's something that you think is out of the Marvel comics, but it's true. It's true. Reality is, now just think about it from a very practical standpoint. If you're really upset about something, you could be at a simcha, but you're not having a great time. So how are you not having a great time at a party? Because your world, your thoughts are creating your world. And likewise, if you're, um, you know, if you're sitting there thinking about a hilarious joke, you're in the middle of a very sad funeral, you may even smile if you're, you know, that twisted. But, but you know, someone might say, what's wrong with that person? Yeah, it is. Their, their reality is their thoughts. And the halacha reflects this as well. So if the of Shabbos, you want to establish, set up shop, tchum, 2,000 amas from where you are, you're allowed to do that. So normally your city, wherever you are, Erev of Shabbos, you create a, a base from the point of Shabbos. And then from that base, 2,000 almost in every direction is where you're allowed to walk. In your city, you can go 2,000 almost past the city limits. And in modern day cities where the cities are just contiguous, you go 2,000 almost from the latest city there. So I can go, I can keep going to Chicago and then past Chicago. And eventually I'm going to, I'm going to reach somewhere, right? Um, where there are no homes or buildings. And then I can go 2,000 almost from there. That's my limit. So I can go miles, many miles if I'm in a place like Chicago. Um, you go on vacation, you have to worry about the home. If you go to the middle of the woods, you can't walk, even if you have an Eruv, right? You can't walk past, I mean, Eruv when you set up the community, but you really can't walk 2,000 miles past that spot. So let's say Eruv shops, I set up my residence at this tree right here, okay? So now that's my camp. Shabbos starts, I'm at that tree. I can now go 2,000 miles in every direction. What if I am 4,000 miles from the city I have to get to and it's about to turn dark? So I'm not going to make it. So I can actually say, well, 2,000 miles from me, there's a tree. 2,000 miles from the tree, there's the city. So I can actually project to astral projection, like Luke Skywalker on the uh, le- le- second, le- le- second last episode of Star Wars. And I can project myself to that tree. And then that tree, I didn't have 2,000 miles from that point. My point of uh, my maximum is that tree. My, my, my center of my, my uh, radius is there. So how am I able to do that? That's a great question. Well, lacha is, is I am wherever my head is. Wherever I put my mind, wherever I put my thoughts, I create shvisa in that makam. So it's even a halachic principle. Um, what so, is, what yeah. if you don't know what's ahead of you? Like, you, you know, you're just sort of in a forest preserve and you're trying to get to, you know, to the city. And you don't know. I mean, you could say there's a tree there, but you just pretend the tree. Yes, I don't know. I don't know how that works because I haven't gone into actual practical Tchum halacha ever in my life. It was just theoretical, but I think you have to know that there's something there. I don't know how, what kind of knowledge you have to have. It's a good question. Um, but the principle is true. So the Rambam in Marduvukam says this is actually an idea, a concept. That if you think about God, that's where God is, right? Whereas God now the this is the Rambam coming from intellectual sphere, but the the Hasidim used to say where is God is the Magid Mi Mezrich. Dov Bear Mezrich, who's the student of the Baal Shem, he said, where is God? Wherever you let him in. It's the same concept. There's another emphasis in his words, and this is the language. Vida, and I'm reading the Rambam here, the action of worship that we're talking about here, Kulam, Kriyasa Torah. This is like reading the Torah, Tefillah, Ve'asos, Shar Mitzos, and Performance of other mitzvahs and tachlis kavanasam ela lahe klamed las asik be mitzvah shemis bar lif not me iske olam. The purpose of a mitzvah is to engage in that mitzvah and to clear your world, to clear your palate. That's all you have in that moment. 
I know people who are makbid not to drink two different wines of the same glass, not washing it out. But mitzvahs or machshavahs, they'll jumble in their head. They'll sit there and they'll talk and they'll open a uh, phone and they'll look at a WhatsApp. And they'll, they won't be present for anything. But God forbid their wine should, should mix up in their glass. They're not going to. So here, for a mitzvah, you have to clear that palate. <clears throat> I think a few years ago, I spoke about the idea of the fidget spinners. Uh, I think is Christine Hedegar. She invented the, uh, the fidget spinner. She would have been very wealthy, but she couldn't afford the $400 renewal fee to renew the patent on that invention. You know, everybody, yeah. poor, poor lady. Uh, yeah. Uh, but um, <laughs> don't worry, because Elon Musk uh, made up for it by purchasing Twitter. So, um, so Maisa, meaning, meaning people, some people are doing well still. That all mitzvahs require a clean palate, right? Fidget spinners, they're a distraction. They're, 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 they're designed to keep you busy with things. Sada Kakun says the reason why hands have to be washed because the Adayim Askanios hand, because hands are busy. What does that mean? And we come out in the middle of the night and you scratch, scratch your, you know, your armpit or something like that, and your hands have to wash in the morning. But but uh, but what Sadok argues is that Yadayim Askanios hand means that hands, by definition, attract impurity because they are distractible, because they're not focused, because you're not aware of what you're doing. And awareness, presence, awareness of a clear palate, knowing what you're doing at all times, is the key to sanctity, to holiness. That's Rav Tzadok. Yeah, so, mindfulness. Yeah. mindfulness. It's, it's mindfulness, yeah. We can, that's the modern day buzzword for this concept. There's Rav, Rav um, who is it? Sorry, COVID brain. Um, COVID era brain. The uh, Chovos Levavos, Rabbi Yona, writes that uh, a tefillah, a prayer, Hatzileni no mipizor hanefesh, save me from scatterbrain, save me from the inability to focus. Rabbi Yona. Uh, yeah, not this. I'm sorry. It's not the Chovos Levavos. This yeah, Rabbi Yona says it's not not the Chovos Levavos. Chovos Levavos is is Rabbi Nebachia. Uh, purpose of mitzvah is that I should be involved in that mitzvah in that moment. Whatever you're doing in that moment it doesn't matter other than that mitzvah. And it's as if when you're doing that, you're doing nothing else. Now, this is something we'd love to tell students today. When you're here, you're only here, you're nowhere else. Okay. And now let's understand on a higher level. When God is with man, when, when, when we're davening, that means that there's a higher level than any other mitzvah. If a mitzvah is completely dominant of that moment in time, then tefillah is even more so. Tefillah is the highest level of connection for God. Kigon him tsauta adam im Hashem is parch al yidei hakavanas machshav soi lav is parch b'shas kiyum mitzvah shofar or lulav. You see, those are my other tachos me'etzim eskolos ve'hakochos sheish b'kiyum mitzvah shofar lulav atzma. So there's fulfilling the mitzvah shofar. There's blowing the shofar or shaking the lulav. So the awareness that God is with you when you do the mitzvah. It's more than just doing the mitzvah. It's the presence of God in the in the moment. I move on. From here we understand. You're always present with everything else, with your limitations, your boundaries, and your distractions. He doesn't say that word, but I'm adding, adding that in here. Those physical confines that you live in exist only when you're not machaving your machshava to Hashem. You are only limited when God is not part of the picture. And when, when you bring God into that world, then all of a sudden your, your world becomes much larger and you're no longer limited. So it's the opposite of what we were talking about. It's the, it's the converse of what we were saying until now. That if you could bring God into an area, that means that by bringing God in, you're also expanding your area, expanding your, your, your parameters. Rebbe Rega Zeh, in this moment, misromen, you elevate who chutz molamo up away from your world. Now you're in front of the heavenly throne with great connection, 
with sanctity, and the quality of Kedusha then elevates on all. Adaraba, kolatachlis ha'avoda, hirak ha'sogaz dveikos. The essence of avoda is understanding that dveikos, that connection. Yotam is that, we understand from here. Ha'ara nora al shivas harikos. A powerful idea about the focus. Shitzarach adam l'shas tefillah. What kind of focus do you need when you're engaged in prayer? Hainu shehe kulo panoi la'avoda, ashilafanav. What does it mean? It means that everybody is focused on avoda in front of you. Um, sorry, you that not everybody. You are entirely focused, free for avoda in front of you. Concentration means clearing your clearing your plate, right? Um, that's the first step to focus. It means that the, that nothing else that's trying to take me away from this moment is going to do that. It's going to succeed. Shabbos, we're able to do so. It's great. We don't have the phone. It's not like I have to put it away in the car when I'm going to dive and it's just not there. It's wonderful to be able to focus, right? The only thing is, is are people trying to talk to me? Are there other things going on? Am I letting the atmosphere get in the way of me, get, get in the way of my, my focus? All those things are true, but it's easier on Shabbos. But to the extent that you can focus, to the extent that you can clear that plate, that's focus is, is developed. Vartsak, Elyonavi, and Elyonavi already cried out about this. Umamash, Mash now, who was Elijah the prophet talking to? He was talking to the Nevi'e HaBaal, the prophets of, of the Baal, of, of uh, Baal Peor, the Avodah Zarah. And the Jews were worshiping Avodah Zarah. And Elijah turned to them and said, how much longer are you going to be sitting on two seafim, on two sides of the fence? Um, and you can't. You can't live in two worlds. You have to, some, at some point or another, you have to decide who you are. So... He put them that challenge up them, and they offered the ketoret, and then of course uh, the, the God consumed the carbon to Hashem, and not the carbon to the Nevi'ah Baal. Uh, yeah, yeah, he challenged them, and it was considered um, his defining moment. Har Hakarmel. Im la Hashem, if you're with God, then you're going to have to walk after God. This is a very hard thing for people who are politicians or people who are um, people who are diplomats and they're you know nice personalities and they like to make everyone happy. It's very difficult to, to, to make a decision sometimes and to say, look, you, sometimes you have you can't you can't split the baby, and that's that's a really difficult challenge. So admatai tem poskam um, is not just about avodah It's about choices in life, direction, right? kind of a person you marry, where you live, a job you take, all those things you have to decide. And it's true in Avodos Hashem. In those moments, you cannot be, you can't have a split identity. You can't, you can't say I'm going to be davening and I'm going to be um, uh, checking my Twitter feed. It doesn't work, right? Vim Kain, Kasher Nimsa Adam, Bemsa Avodoso. When you are in the middle of your avoda, the Omid the Fanu Yisbarach Pol, Emsa Posek Lein Yinacher, Right, the Regas Ei Natek Min Akira Vadveko Chulo. At that moment, you're completely detached from all the other things that are close to you and dear to you. Rechach Choser Chalila, and it repeats like this: Rega Echad Davuk Lashem. One moment you're connected to God, Uve Rega Asheni, and the second moment, Betehom Olam Hazeh. You're in the depth of this world. You're in the you're in the, the pits of physicality. Kachkofets hubmitzias. And you're actually making that jump in reality. Mikan lekan from here to here, meregel regel from moment to another. Misofa olam at sofa from one end of the world to the other. Maaretz at arkia from the earth to the heavens. Kedai bizayon ukedai bizayon bekatsef. I don't know what that last expression is meaning, but it's disgrace and, and yeah, how shameful and upsetting that we are doing that, yeah. right? Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. You know, did you see that last night? It was very interesting. You know, and you turn back and you jump back to this and you check your the stock market. How can you jump back and forth between those two realities from Tfila and outside of Tfila? That is the most shameful thing that we could imagine. Because you can't you can't live in two worlds, right? You just can't keep jumping. And also imagine how distracted you feel when you're trying to do two, two mundane activities at the same time, right? You can't focus. Imagine now your neshama is stretching from what, from heaven to earth and one end of the universe, the other end. God is in and God's out. And it's like, you, you can actually, 
lose your mind. It's much better that you don't engage at all in Kedusha rather than do it, do it a half job because you'll just, you'll just, you'll just destroy. I mean, it's so, it's so, it's, it's such a torrent for the soul. I think to have to go through that. Um, I'm ein materas paraxium zela ore rikuzo. So the purpose of this summary chapter is not to cause us to focus on machshava kavanas It's not about kavanas. So that is, of course, the greatest battle that we wage whenever we're trying to pray. To conquer your, your thoughts. And that requires a great deal of work. As the Rambam discusses at length there in the third chapter of There's another kind of avoda, which is much easier to do. Famous story about the who was known as the um, the the Snegor de Israel, the defense attorney of the Jewish people, would always find merit in our actions. He saw someone once wrapped in Talzin's villain davening, and he was covered in wagon grease, and he was greasing up the wheels of a wagon. Um, the equivalent would be, you know, you're filling your tires with air while you're, while you're trying to, you know, daven. Um, and uh, he saw someone doing that, and he, he commented, look how great the Jewish people are. Even while he's working, He's davening. Because again, the orientation was look at him while he's davening, he's doing this low, low work. So, really, it's a prodigy. Even while he's working, he's also thinking about Hashem. That's the great prodigy. So, of course, that's one component, but that's not what we're here for. I love how he makes a side comment, and side comment is so insightful itself. Mm-hmm. One of the great things that when Shlomo Karabach would tell a story, is his pre-story was even was, was just as good as the, as the story itself. He'd give a background to someone or history or place. And it was the first two minutes, that was the greatness. I've been listening to his stories for years. The godless of his stories were that he was able to, uh, to rope you in already before you even started the story. It's fantastic. Um, and the, this is not about awakening person's senses when they're davening from Esrei. Shizuhi halacha gemura. That's clear in the Shulchan Aruch and from the Gemara. Ha-kavanas ha-regalim segirat enayim. Putting your um, uh, your legs together, uh, raglaim rather, and segiras enayim and closing your eyes. We know all that. Vakama yesh lit orer v'zeh b'shar chalke atzila. But we should be me'orer on the other portion of the tzila. V'chein b'zman amirath brachos. When we say brachos, japamim, afilu eitzel muvcharei b'nei Torah, even by people who are People who are who are um, really b'nei Torah b'shas bracha or p'sukei dezimra when they make a bracha when they say p'sukei dezimra matzu yoser veso kigon b'shas bracha berchat amazon or they're more in their house let's say they're benching enav mishutatos enav hena the eyes are going back and forth all over the place for distraction right I remember once we're in the middle of davening and there was a cicada like on the top of the Aaron Kodesh. In the, and I, and then I was speaking, and he was it was still there, and nobody was looking at my me. Everyone was like, "Wow, it's okay!" Like they've never. It was amazing. It was amazing. I could have I could have like sworn the entire time, and nobody would have heard it. They were just so focused on the um, on the. I could have walked out in the middle of Russia, and nobody people would not have realized it was happening. Um, yeah, but um, I, I have a running gag with a with a chavrus of mine is things that you're not allowed, that, you, that you'll never be able to say in the drusha. So we have like some code, code words or phrases that if they ever, that first one to use those in a drusha wins the competition. So not, neither was the one so far, but it's a, it's a running joke. You'll never know what, oh, I think you're going to say what the word yeah, is. Word no, is. no, no. Um, Pee Wee Herman, what's the word of the day? So a matsui, Yosef bragging rights. So Yosef beveso kigon bishas bracha berchamaz and ena mishutatos heina beheina pamim romas biyada the kord spanav. Sometimes you're even hinting with your hands, sign language, and you're winking with your eyes. Menahel sichos shlemos, and you're having full conversations with two words. New, new. She shanhaga zu horeses es kavana dis hanhaga 
destroys Kavana altogether. Um, and it doesn't allow you to focus. I'm going to show you something funny that, that this relates to. Um, and it takes away all of the splendor and the beauty of tefillah and everything that that was um, that was uh, that was supposed to be part of the avodah. So here is a meme. It's Yiddish to English translation. Ready? You can have full conversation with the word new. So new means I agree. New or new means not so bad. New or new. Come on. Or new new. I've heard worse. Or no, stop that right now. No. Why are you telling me this? No, no, no. No, no, no. Don't dare. Don't dare do that. No, go on. No, get on with it. No. Well, spit, spill the beans. And then there's no, stop bothering. No. Right. And finally, no, that's all. So <laughs> it's one word and it means everything. And here people are able to have full conversations, right? Exactly. Okay, so now we go to base. Benir l'chadesh. The avapida Rambam hidgish nechitzus. I just got a text that that the head of the OU would like to meet me, but focused on this right now, right? You guys are more important. Benir um, l'chadesh. The avapida Rambam hidgish nechitzus kavanas machshava. That even though. The Rambam emphasizes the kavana kavana the thought of a person's thought process. Like that only through our thoughts do we experience that connection to God. Um, nonetheless. But even if we can't reach that level. And we don't have kavana when we dive, and it still is tefillah. Kavana ma'kevet rach bebracha rishona. Truth is, only in the first blessing of Shemana Esrei is kavana required. If you, you have to go back if you don't have kavana in the first bracha. But any other bracha of Shemana Esrei, if you didn't focus when you said the bracha, you don't have to go back. Harei vadeh shemotziyas kol tefillah, hi kesher beino lakar baracho. Every tefillah establishes a connection between us and God. Im kein, evzed nemar af betefillah. Shaloba Kavana, even when you dive without Kavana, you still connect to Hashem. And came before Ma'ad de Be'emet, Shnei Ofnei, his Kashur, Lashmir, Zarachesh, Tfila. Really, there are two levels of Tfila, of connection to Hashem. One that happens, Machshava, and one happens, Maisa. One happens when I daven. Davening, I'm talking to God. I'm physically moving my lips, I'm saying words. That's a physical activity. And then there's the thought process, the Kavana Salev. That's another level of connection to Hashem. When I focus my heart to Hashem, that's the kavanah of the soul. When I stand before God in service, that's a connection in action. Even though when I'm saying the words and I'm not thinking about Hashem, I'm not really making the same level of a kesher. I'm still connected to Hashem in action. But if in the middle of my tefillah, I somehow am able to be pone to another asek, another job, that if in the middle of your bracha, you hint to your friend, I'm almost done. Just wait, wait for me for a minute. Did you do this, the classic? Mm -hmm. If I have to communicate to someone else, the moment I tell someone to wait for me, I've just detached myself from God. And I fell from a high level, high story, to a low level. And Rabbi Nechaim Alevi talks about this in the laws of tefillah. Okay, so one more, we'll go uh, one or two more. Obviously, not paying attention to the bench, you're paying attention to the right. So, you weren't really that connected with the bench. Right. Yeah. Why do you hear it? The Rambam lists off the general types of Voda, Asias, Mitzvah, Lima, Torah, Harei, Yesh, Bidvarov, Chidush, Atsum. There's a wondrous Chidush in the words of the Rambam. Shagam and Mitzvah, Shofar, Ulul of Ikar, Hatach, Zim, Tzot. 
im Hashem is Baruch, the pole of Bob at Teva im Mitzvah. Then when I'm blowing the shofar, doing the lulav, there is a great connection that's made through the Maisa Mitzvah. Hagam, Shein, Zema, Akim, Mitzvah, Klal. So by movement in the mitzvah, I'm also forging a connection. And it's not part of the mitzvah itself, but, I, but the fact that I'm doing an action forges a, a kesher. Because tefillah is saying the words. So if that's the case, the very action of saying the words itself makes a connection, even more so than, than maybe by waving the lulav, which is not part of the mitzvah, it's ancillary to it. The main mitzvah is to pick it up and bind it. Once I do that, I've done my mitzvah already. If I did that and if I forgot to make a bracha, I'm already yotz. So that's how you make the bracha, it's upside down. But with tefillah, saying the words itself is the, is the essence of the ma'isa mitzvah. So, and the fact that I want to have kavana and think about it and know what I'm saying, understand the words and, and, and zone out the rest of the world, that's success in the tefillah. So that changes the form of what you're doing. Because the tefillah really is about closeness to God. Which is constant connection to Hashem. Versus a dveikos which is interrupted. Staccato kind of conversation where I talk to God and then I talk to my friend. Talk to my other friend. There are two different existence of dveikos shown as the gamri. The, per, the, the non-stop connection to Hashem versus the person who's interrupted. Almost, almost that you don't even consider the, the former to be actual dveikos Hashem. Hashem yim And it's almost like, like, I don't know how to translate those words. It's almost like it's um, um, shadow. Um, virtually a laughing stock. Okay. Okay. So he says that that isn't even a real, that would not even constitute a real experience. Okay. What's he saying here? That, 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 that because the entire, so let's just summarize this idea. Actually, having a, uh, so I'm going to stop in a minute, but let me just, let me just summarize the idea. Any mitzvah we do, so there's the performance of the mitzvah, and then anything else you're doing physically to get there, to be part of it, that's sort of ancillary, right? But, um, but but the Maisa Mitzvah of Tfilah itself, he says, was saying the words. So by saying the words, I'm making connection with Hashem. But we know that the more I enhance my presence of mind, my clarity, my awareness of Hashem, that enhances the, the experience altogether. So you could have two people doing the exact same thing, but they're completely experiencing a different, a different experience altogether. One person is having a transcendent Tfilah. The other person is just saying the words. They're both talking to God, but one person is having like, a, a bad internet connection. Because every time he talks to Hashem, then it interrupts, right? You ever have a, a online a call with someone and then it keeps going in and out? And, the, and always when they're trying to say important things, they take you into their car and they have a Bluetooth of a Bluetooth of this, and you don't know what they're saying. So imagine that's the connection to Hashem, right? That you're not, you're not present. So you can't compare those. It looks like they're doing the same thing, but they're not. They're not the same activity at all altogether. And that's, I think, um, I think what he's getting at here. And he says, that's the point. That my point is not to talk about kavana, but talk about how you can how two people can do the same mitzvah of tila and do it in completely different experiences and emerge from it. That's why some people can love davening and some people hate davening because they've had something different. All right, this is a good place to stop. And I think we're almost, um, we're actually almost done with the safer, which is good. I think one or two more sessions will probably be done.